Well, hello, hello, Young and the Restless Daily Recap fans. Today's Daily Recap is for Wednesday, October the 26th, 2022, Wednesday, October 26th. You know, today was your typical Wednesday filler episode um, with minor happenings uh, on the show. Uh, we kind of started out as a little sad. Um, Connor and Ad oh, that's not the one I want to start with. Connor and Adam are in Crimson Light. And Connor, when he first walked in, I thought, oh, what? <laughs> it took me a minute to realize that's a doggone good costume that Connor's wearing. I mean, the makeup work alone, phenomenal, right? That's enough to scare any kid, any adult, too, looking in the mirror. But they he was going to a Halloween party in a couple of hours, uh, but they were to meet Chelsea early at Crimson Light so she could take pictures and the whole nine yards. So right off the bat, Connor's like, you know, Dad, we we really can, can just go. We really you could just drop me off at the party early. And he goes, no, but if I do that, they'll probably put you to work, you know, burying bloody hands or, you know, doing all kinds of things. No, we're going to, we, we specifically are going to meet your mom. So they sit down and Connor's like, she's probably not even going to show up. And Adam's like, what would make you say that? You, you know, cause he's like, even though she's supposed to be here right now, but I'm sure she's on her way. Well, Sally was walking in the coffee house. And she saw Connor and Adam and she could hear them talking. And Connor says, no, she probably forgot. He goes, she's forgetting to do a lot lately. She's forgetting to do the things she says she's going to do. She forgets to go to bed. She forgets to get up on time. She's late for everything. So she probably uh, just forgot. She goes, because she's just really sad about Johnny. Everything, uh, all she thinks about is Johnny. She goes, she doesn't even think about me anymore. And Adam's like, oh, no, no, Connor. No, bud, that's not it. Your mother loves you. She, she, no, she thinks about you. You know, she goes, no, no. And he says, she just apologizes for everything now. And, oh, uh, and so he goes, she's that way with you? He goes, yeah. So he's like, I really would just rather skip the pictures. You know, I could even go back to the ranch and just wait <laughs> until time to go to the party. You know, so Chelsea, I'm not Chelsea, Sally walks over and she's talking. She's like, oh my goodness, you are definitely going to win best costume. You know, Sally is doing her Sally thing with Connor. And Adam says, you know what? I have to go to the to the drugstore to get stuff for Halloween. And Connor says, you're going to get a lot of candy, right? And he goes, no, no. Sally goes, what are you guys passing out for Halloween? And Adam goes, toothbrushes. And Connor's like, uh, no. And Adam's like, somebody's got to do it, <laughs> you know? So he goes, and by the way, speaking of toothbrushes, I got to go to the drugstore to get some. And Connor's like, don't get toothbrushes, dad. Get lots of candy. So he says, Sally, would you mind just sitting with Connor for just a little bit? I'm going to run to the store and I'll be back. Sally knew exactly what Adam was going to do. He was going to go find Chelsea, right? So she goes, sure, sure. So she sits down and she talks to Connor. She and Connor have always had a very good rapport with each other. She could talk, you know, to him and, and they have good conversations. So they talked about horror stuff and Halloween and costumes. Adam shows up at Chelsea's door, but of course, uh, Chelsea was just, before he got there, she was still in the bed. She had not even gotten up. She was just looking sad on her head on the pillow, just staring into space like, oh, 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 oh. you know? And she finally slowly sat up and kind of looked in her room is dark, just kind of looked around like, oh, there is nothing to live for. And then she hears a knock on her door and she's like, Chelsea, Chelsea, are you in there? And she's like, what? Huh? And she's, he goes, Chelsea, are you in there? It's Adam. So she slowly gets up and she walks over to her phone, which is on the, the, uh, uh, 
what do you call it, dresser drawers. And she looks like, oh no, it's this late. Like, oh no. So she goes and she opens the door. He goes, are you okay? So she goes, I wasn't feeling well this morning. And I, I actually must have fallen asleep because I, I just, you know, woke up. And he goes, uh, I've been calling you like a hundred times. She said, yeah, my phone is on silent or vibrate or whatever. And so she goes, I, he goes, Connor is waiting for you. We were waiting for you at Crimson Lights. So she goes, oh no, oh no. He must think I forgot about him. Uh, is he okay? Um, I, I didn't mean, you know, to, to be late. I didn't mean, he goes, Chelsea, Connor will be fine, but look. He needs to see you. You know, you need to 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 come with me, right? And so I said, so she goes, oh, okay. She goes, I I know I should have texted. I should have texted. He goes, yeah, because then I know, you know, I would have known what was going on, right? And so she goes, look, Adam, uh, can you uh, give me a minute so that I can at least look presentable? Um because, you know, let me just freshen up. So he goes, okay, Chelsea, you know, so he waits for her and she slowly moseys along to the bathroom and he's looking like, oh no, she, she needs help. She is in complete throes of depression, right? So um, Sally's still talking to, to Connor and Adam shows up with Chelsea and he, she's like, hey, Con and first she's looking like, who that Sally Spectre's talking to my son. But then she realizes, look, at least Connor is happy. He's, they're having a good conversation. He was laughing. Sally was laughing. And so she knew not to begrudge that because all she's giving the boy is grief, right? So she walks over to Pi Connor. Oh my goodness, you look so good in your costume. And she, he goes, hi. And so she goes, um, I'm sorry I'm late. I'm sorry I'm late. Uh, but you know, um, you want to go outside and take some pictures? And he goes, I guess. I mean, he just ugh, his whole attitude changed, right? So she, Adam says, That's a great idea. Let's go out and take some pictures. And then he looked at Sally and he mouthed, Thank you. And actually, when he left to go to the allegedly the drugstore to get some some toothbrushes, he told Sally. And he went to get Chelsea and he told her thank you again as they're heading out the door. Well, Nick is heading in the door uh, to deliver some bad news. Earlier, Nick and Victoria were talking. And of course, Victoria is headstrong. She wants to fire Sally. Sally is not knowledgeable enough. I mean, Sally is not the woman for the job. She doesn't trust Sally and this, that, and the other. And Nick is saying, what makes you think Nate Hastings is the man for the job? He goes, Sally is doing a good job, Victoria. Her numbers are good. Yeah, yeah. But they gonna, they, you know, they could be better. And uh, she's just going on and on. You know, but no, no, I want, you know, somebody I can trust that I feel will do it. And I feel that's going to be Nate Hastings. He goes, the guy that was stabbing his family in the back. What do you think he's going to do? What loyalties do you think he's going to have for us? But so Victoria says, uh, he hasn't given me up. He could have, but he hasn't. And he, she says, and you know what, Nicholas? Over the years, Nate Hastings has been very loyal to our family. I'm surprised she remembers that. She goes, there have been a number of instances where he's even put his medical license on the line for this family. So. Nate, definitely. And bottom line, he didn't go through with it, betraying his family. Okay? He didn't. But I feel that I'm going to offer him this opportunity. So, so she's like, and it's my call, Nicholas. And Nicholas was, you know, said, no, but Sally, this, he goes, that's because you are personally involved with her. That's the only reason you're trying to fight this hard for her. And he goes, and on top of the fact she hasn't done anything to warrant losing her job, Victoria, when she could have printed information about the Act Ashland Lock incident, she did not. 
that showed loyalty right there. And so uh, Victoria says, well, yeah, but you know what? She missed a marketing meeting. He said, still, a minor offense, definitely not one that you would lose your job over, you know? And she's like, Nicholas, bottom line, it is my call. I told you the other day to get used to the idea. So the question is this, either you want me to tell Sally she's fired and I'll be happy to do so, or do you want to tell her? And he looked at her, he goes, no, it should come from me. I will tell her. So she goes, great. So Nicholas is leaving, you know, heading to Crimson Lights. I guess he texted her and asked her where she was. And Victoria picks up her phone to call Nate to come over, right? Now we have Nate and Devon. Nate leaves this long voicemail talking about, you know, we're family. We shouldn't leave it like this. Some things were said. Please, let's, let's at least try to work it out. Family doesn't quit on one another and yada, yada, yada. And Devon was letting his messages go to voicemail at first, but then he listened, obviously. And he finally decided he was cool and calm enough to call Nate back. And he said, listen, Nate, I've got your message. Yes, we could talk, you know, so I'll be over. Well, Billy goes by to see Nate. And Nate was fully prepared for Billy to rant and rave. He goes, what, are you ready to just give me round two of how disappointed you are? He says, no. He said, I'm just here to talk to you. He said, because look, man, I'm you. He says, now, I did not, I have not done what you did or was going to do to your family. Actually, what you did, he just didn't go through with it. Um, to your family, I didn't do that to mine. He says, but I have done some things, you know, when I was working with my family at Jabot, that definitely put me on the odds with them. He says, they have been disappointed in me. No, I mean, so many times they probably can't even count. He says, and I'm I'm saying this. What I'm saying, I'm saying, I, I'm meaning this. If I would have done to my family what you did to yours, he said, you want to know what's the, the sad thing? Is they would expect something like that from me. Yes, it would be horrible. It would be, they would, it would just cause chaos, but they would expect that from me because I have been just a, a perpetual screw up. He said, but you, Nate, nobody expected that from you. And that's what makes it so hard. You have always been upstanding. And I mean, he was naming Nate's qual you know, good qualities. And Nate's just looking at him. He says, so I'm telling you this. He goes, well, but, but, you know, what are you saying? He goes, they may not forgive me. Forgive me. He goes, oh, it's going to take some time. And you are going to have to work at their forgiveness. Okay. He goes, well, I tried. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to apologize, but Devon doesn't even want to recognize what, what, you know, the part he played in it. And he's like, right now, uh, Nate, the anger is too fresh period. And whatever part Devon may have played in, in, in making you feel you needed to do what you did, it still doesn't equal what you did to your family. He says, so what you need to do, I'm telling you, you need to fix it. And you need to say the two words to start that's going to put it on the right track. And that's, I'm sorry. And so Nate looked at him and that's when his phone rings and it's Devon. And he goes, this is Devon calling me right now. So Nate, Billy says, then I'll let you take care of it. And he leaves and um, that's when Nate asked him to come over. And then Devon comes over. Believe it or not, they did not go to blows. They didn't go to come to blows. They actually, no one raised their voice. Nate talks again and he says, look, I just, I want to know, can you ever forgive me? And I'm thinking that's too soon to ask that. 
Nate has to show in deeds the person he is. You know, you can't say, I'm not that person anymore. And you just did it yesterday. What you talking about? You know? So he goes, he goes, um, something about, I just want to have a conversation or, or, you know, we need to talk it through. And Devon said, oh, you mean like us talking it through last night and Noah's club? He goes, no, no. He goes, we both said some things that we shouldn't have that were out of line. And Devon looked at him and said, well, we both did, huh? And Nate says, well, okay, mainly I said a lot of things that were out of line. And in my mind, I'm thinking, no, Devon pretty much only, even though he was the one telling Nate, don't leave on our account. Nate was the one accusing you, you, you. And Devon says, no matter what, it doesn't justify what you did stabbing our family in the back that's what Javon was saying but Nate was saying no you this you that you so busy this and you that so anyway um they, they both sit down Devon sits down first because it was yeah man you know what let's talk and Devon actually said I have been thinking about what you said you know about me trying to hang on to Neil and and not accepting his death or, or whatever, you know, keeping him alive. And he says, no. And and but and what Nate, um Devon said is to some extent, um, I think that's that's you're right. He goes, My father, like he impacted my life. This was we had the rare privilege as father and son building a business up from scratch and seeing it grow. And Neil took me under his wing and I learned from him the ropes of the business. He goes, I think my problem was, I tried to, he told, he told Nate, I tried to do the same for you. I tried to take you under my wing and teach you the ropes like Neil taught me, but you didn't want to, you didn't want to be taught. You, you, you didn't, you felt you already knew everything you needed to, to know, Nate. He says, so yeah, perhaps my approach, you know, was not for you, but really Nate didn't know anything about that business, right? And so Devon said, so you know what? And, and I'm probably putting my own words to that. I know my father's dead. No, I'm not trying to, to keep him alive. I know he's dead, but I am trying to keep his legacy alive. I am trying to grow the business, which he has. Hamilton Win Winters has been very successful, a thriving company, right? And so he says, but no, I, I gave what you said a, a lot of thought, you know, do I not want to work with anybody else because, you know, I worked with Neil. And what was interesting to me is people forget who is the half owner of society, now, yes, he gave Abby full control, the full reins, but Devon, and I, I don't even know if he's half owner. He may be a little more than half. Abby, who has a billion, because remember when all of them sued Victor, Abby had got, they all got a billion dollars. Abby's one of them. But Abby did not want to use all her own capital for society. She came to Devon. And she and Devon did a joint venture in that restaurant, building it from the ground up. But I think Devon put up a little more capital than she did. Okay. So he is not so controlling that he wanted to take control of uh, society. So anyway, you know, they, they ended up, they didn't argue. Devon didn't argue. He told Nate, okay, Nate, you're saying, because Nate said, I want you to know what I did. It would never, ever happen again. And I thought, how could you trust that? 
How could you trust that he it wouldn't happen again? That's like you hire a babysitter to, to watch your baby and they leave your baby in the house to go to the corner store to pick up some cigarettes or potato chips or soda pop or whatever. And you happen to pop in home unannounced and your baby is home alone, whether it's crying or not. And the babysitter comes back in and you know what they say? Oh, shoot. You know what? That'll never happen again. Do you believe it? No. The, the only way you know is you caught him. Now, Nate did tell on himself, but it would happen again because his same demented thinking that caused him to think that he should do something like that would kick back in again. And there's no filter for him. There's no internal filter. Because he is saying, no, it was my own rationalization that the need to, uh, those are things I told myself so that I could have power and, and all of that. Well, that power monster would pop its ugly head back up as far as I'm concerned, because he still hasn't owned up. And so Devon says, okay, since you want to prove yourself, you want to you know do right by the family tell me who's the ceo that you were that you were selling or giving information to he goes well that's irrelevant because now i don't have shares to sell them so that no one else could get majority control because there's no sales uh shares for me to sell and so devon says but we need to know, like, we need to know what company, what CEO out there, because let's face it, everybody, insider information is, is illegal going into an IPO. And so Nate's like, no, no, I, I'm sorry, I can't give that information. He goes, oh, oh, wait. So you're going to be loyal to that person and not loyal to your family because there's like Devon's like there's somebody coming after us and you're not going to tell us so that we could shore up you know like suit up and he goes yeah but that that tactic that was going to go down is, is no longer a viable option and Devon says okay you know what then that's your answer then that's your answer so you're choosing not to help us by letting us know who's ready to take, you know, to really take us over, you still gonna protect that person, then I I can't, mm -mm, then there is no me forgiven. You know, there is no us making this right. You know, it, it, it is what it is, right? It's, it's gonna be what it's gonna be. And so Devon, he wasn't yelling or anything. He, just walked out the door. And then that's when Victoria calls Nate over and he comes to the office and she says, I want to make you the CEO of Newman Media. And Nate looks at her like, what? So that's where they ended things. We shall see tomorrow. Does Nate take the job? You know, I guess they don't care that it may look like, look, okay, I guess that was the CEO, right? Look at where he, he's getting a job offer at. So I don't know. Um, but that was today's episode. Not not too, too much uh, happened. And Nick goes to Sally and he says, Sally, we need to talk. And it, and it ends there. So let's go to Comic Corner. Comic Corner, a few comments. Robin says, Tucker tells Diane she messed up for telling uh, Jack. Um, and, uh, in other words, it, it, he's saying that, you know, she messed up all the hard work really that she made with her son and her grandson, um, and that it's going to be no possibility for repairing between Jack and Kyle and, and all of that. Um, and then Dito says, <laughs> it was so, so funny, Dito, Dito says, daily recap lady. I am laughing because you think I did research. The truth is I've been watching that show since Jill started working for Catherine Chancellor and had a quickie 
in what was called the tool shed with Philip Chancellor. Uh, we will not discuss how old I am while wow, you are a veteran YNR viewer. Um, I don't remember the specifics about a storyline. Um, let's see. If I don't remember the specifics about a storyline, I will tell you I'm not sure or something to that effect. Otherwise, the history I give is based on memory. Well, your memory is definitely better than mine. Um, maybe it's because I used to watch too many different ones. Uh, for memory, I got to use <laughs> use it while I still can. <laughs> while I still have a girlfriend, LOL. This because the soaps that I used to watch. Young and the Restless came later for me. It was All My Children. It was One Life to Live, and it was General Hospital. I've been watching all my children for a number of years, but I didn't start watching it truly um, off and on when when One Life to Live, not One Life to Live, because One Life to Live was not an everyday one. You know, it was a filler one for me. Um, but when all my children went off the air, that's when the young and the restless really filled took its slot for me um but and then not in first position because then i liked all my children better than general hospital but then when all my children went off the air um general hospital became the number one soap for me and then young and the restless was number two um i did watch port charles when it came on i did watch night shift um when it came on because I think even night shift came on at night it was prime time and there was I can't think of the soap there was something else maybe in between for a little little bit there was a soap called generations I used to watch for a hot minute um so therefore I don't remember a lot of the old old young and the restless history because I really wasn't watching it then uh, all my children was my heart uh, back then so anyway thank you so much Dito's and you know what we're all gonna rely on your memory for some of those flashbacks some of those uh blasts from the past I will be back tomorrow for the next daily recap of the young and the restless <laughs>